1310 WICH with Fishing Today. Whether it's in the ocean, on the pond, in the stream, or off the dock, it's all about fishing. Let's join Jesse Roach with Fishing Today on 1310 WICH. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Fishing Today. And uh, very exciting time now. We've got uh, the, the stripers are here. I, I know personally I was out there and um, a 40 plus inch fish. I fought it for a while, got it all the way in, went for the thumb grab on the mouth and the thing just popped off and off it went. But exciting nonetheless. And uh, as we get into the striper fishing, there's all sorts of seminars going on. A little later on, we're going to talk with Matt Brown. He's going to be hosting a seminar next week over at Three Bells Marina, and uh, it's going to be on live lining. So if you're out there for the bunker and all that fun stuff, uh, he's going to tell you about that coming up. And um, we're also going to tell you about some other seminars locally that can help you get into the fishing and be a better fisherman. We'll get into some tournament reports and then uh, also you can give us a call we want to get you guys involved uh, if you have any questions comments show suggestions fishing experiences then uh, we want to you know we want to hear from you and uh, what is the number here Glenn it is 889-5252 all right and uh, that said I'd like to get you involved with the show and uh, we will turn it over to Glenn O'Brien on the other side of the glass today filling in for Rick Joseph and he has your news and your marine forecast. All right, thank you very much. Well, the bonus striped bass program will run from May 1st through December 31st this year. Deep will distribute two harvest tags and harvest report cards per license holder per year this year. The tag must be securely affixed to the jaw of the fish immediately upon harvest and must remain on the fish until you arrive home. And the harvest report card must also be completed upon harvesting a qualifying fish. And the report card should then be uh, returned to deep within uh, two days of harvest. The cards are pre-addressed to marine fisheries and are postage paid. You simply need to drop the completed card into any mailbox. Tags will be available beginning uh, Wednesday, April 20th. So as, as of now, as of this week, at deep offices and facilities... And there's a limit of uh, two tags annually per Connecticut fishing license holder. However, for convenience, one person may pick up at most four tags by presenting valid Connecticut fishing licenses for two anglers. And children are also eligible to receive tags by signing up for a free youth fishing passport. The tags will be available on a first-come, first-served basis for as long as supplies last. And we have some locations where you can... uh, pick these up. Uh, Marine Headquarters, 333 Ferry Road in Old Lyme, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. Also at the Eastern District in Marlboro, 209 Hebron Avenue. And in Franklin, at the uh, Franklin WMA, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's at 391 Route 32. And uh, time for our Marine Forecast from WICH and Fishing Today. And for today, northerly winds 5 to 10 uh, knots, seas 1 foot or less, then 1 to 2 feet this afternoon. The chance for showers for the morning. Northerly winds tonight at 5 to 10 knots, that'll increase to 10 to 15 knots with gusts up to 20 after midnight. Seas 1 to 2 feet. Sunday's outlook, northerly winds 5 to 10 knots with gusts up to 20 and becoming westerly in the afternoon. Seas 1 to 2 feet. Sunday night, southwesterly winds, 5 to 10 knots, seas 1 to 2 feet in the evening, and then 1 foot or less. And that is your marine forecast from WICH. And now back to Jesse. All right. And uh, so, yeah, the rain is behind us, I think, for the most part for the evening. I know some friends were out there early this morning, and um, but it's looking good. So uh, And we had a, a full moon, too, which also plays a, a role and uh, how the fish are biting and so the tides may also be a little stronger and a little bigger so uh, be aware out there if you're hitting in a, a rip or uh, you know it could get interesting so make sure you are on point with all of that uh, some fishing tournaments going on uh, well also you know we'll also give you the barometric pressure barometric pressure plays a, an important role too and uh, it seems to be uh, 2978 all throughout the state and uh, that's, there's your barometric pressure. 
for the day and uh it's not really rising or or uh, getting lower so there it is some tournaments going on we haven't talked about tournaments in a little while um we do have some today that have already gotten started so that's probably not going to be a factor if you didn't know about it already but tomorrow there is a uh, one 7 a.m bantam lake extreme bass masters that's at the state launch also candlewood lake heart of connecticut that is at danbury town park launch uh, another one, Candlewood Lake, is happening in Middlesex County Bass Hunters at Latins Cove. Uh, also tomorrow, Highland Lake, Connecticut Bassman. That's at the state launch. Lake uh, Lilanoa, TBF of CT, and uh, it's at Steel Bridge. Uh, Massapog Lake, Rip and Lips, that's at the state launch. That's tomorrow. And then next week, uh, the 27th, Lake Lilanoa, Hudson Valley Bassmasters. That's at Steel Bridge. Uh, also on the 28th, you have Candlewood Lake Topwater Bassers. That's at Squance Cove. Mansfield Hollow Reservoir happening on the 28th. Size Matters Bass Club. That's at the state launch. Uh, Candlewood Lake on the 29th. And that is uh, Case. That's at Squance Cove. Also the 29th. Connecticut River. Windsor Rod and Gun Club. That's uh, Palisado Avenue. Bantam Lake on the 30th. Orange County Bassmasters, that's at the state launch. Also on the 30th, Beaver Brook Pond. Weathersfield Parks and Recreation Department, that's at the state launch. Also the 30th, uh, a couple going on in Candlewood Lake, ABA of PA in New Jersey at Latins Cove. Candlewood Lake also, Black Rock Bass Busters, that's at Latins Cove. And those are some tournaments that are happening. Uh, I didn't really see any contact information on them. These are listed at the DEP for uh, registered tournaments so you can also go to ctdeep site if you want to learn more about uh when these tournaments are happening and then you can just google them pretty much i would say and uh, then you can go ahead and figure out when all that is is happening uh we've got some seminars that are happening too we're going to be talking with matt brown after the break about his uh his turn or his uh seminar coming up at three bells marina next weekend but also today there is a couple that you can check out rivers and bait and tackle 440 boston post road in old saybrook you can rsvp 860-388-2283 that's 860-388-2283 at rivers and bait and tackle 440 boston post road in old saybrook and it's going to be on bunker spoons by captain bruce millar Captain Bruce will cover all the details on how to effectively fish bunker spoons. This is a great way to catch huge stripers, and he will describe many techniques and how that will produce. Also, tomorrow at Boat Locker, that is 706 Howard Ave in Bridgeport, phone number 203-259-7808. That's 203-259-7808. And Sean Barham and Bobby Nagy will be talking black fishing and judging the tides for ideal fishing. So uh, you want to check out those. It's always a great way to better yourself and uh, get out there and, and have more fun as you, you get a tight line. And uh, that's happening there. And uh, like I said, we'll take some phone calls today too. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, show suggestions, you can always come on board with us. And uh, that number again, Glenn, what is that number? i got to memorize it. You need it right in front of you. I need it, I do. 889-5252, area code, by the way, for our Rhode Island listeners, Eastern Long Island listeners, is 860 for fishing today. (laughs) Thank you. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with Matt Brown as he talks about his seminar coming up. That's next weekend over at Three Bells Marina, and uh, he's got a lot of great information for you when we return. Fishing Today on WICH. Family, community, economy. This is our town. This is where we live. Get the local advantage. Think local business first. Hi, this is Andy Russell, Vice President and General Manager for the Hall Communications Radio Group. 
We've been proud to do business in this market now for more than 50 years. And over these 50 years, we've seen the area grow and prosper. We understand local business is a key to our success and to the region's success. When you shop local, money stays local. Here is David Wu of Simply Pharmacy in Waterford. Supporting local business is key to keeping our economy strong. I'm pharmacist David Wu, owner of Simply Pharmacy, and I welcome you to visit our exceptional staff on Boston Post Road in Waterford to experience compassionate local care. Simply Pharmacy, simply the best in pharmacy care. Thanks, David. We encourage you to shop local today and every day. Get the local advantage. Think local business first. Think local first. Welcome back to Fishing Today on WICH. With me now is Matt Brown, Three Bells Outfitters, Fishing Team, and Hobie Kayak Fisherman. And we've got a seminar coming up about live lining from a kayak. And that's going to be held over at Three Bells Outfitters. That's 113 Oskwagachi Hills Road in Niantic. And uh, we'll tell you a little more about how to get in touch with them online and with the phone number. First, hey, Matt, how are you? Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jesse. I'm doing well. Thanks. And, you know, uh, it's always great for people to have these opportunities to and these seminars for people to come learn more and uh, to actually meet people that fish, too. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking about on this seminar. So we're going to cover quite quite a wide spectrum of topics. Uh, I, I'm going to do a lot of live lining discussion, um, live eels, uh, scup, and live bunker, um, different tactics on catching, storing eels, things like that. Um, I'm also going to do a bit of a segment around uh, the spring fishery and the mouth of the Connecticut River and the Thames River. Um, I want to touch on tube and worm fishing. It's a super effective tactic that I think any new kayak fisherman should learn. Um, you know, and, and quite a bit of safety stuff I want to cover. I, I'm getting worried that there's a lot of new kayak fishermen coming into the community and maybe aren't taking all the necessary precautions with the colder water temps. So I want to make sure that that type of uh, subject is covered as well. That's a great idea. You know, I you know I've seen that happen where someone didn't have their drag set properly, and uh, they had their line sideways to the kayak, and over they went. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> a lot of situations on the water that you have to be prepared for. Um, you know, there's a lot of safety devices that you, you need to have on board, in my opinion, um, especially your life vest. <laughs> yes. Yes, and um, so how did you get started with fishing? Go back now to how we get to you doing a seminar. Uh, where did it all begin for you? Oh, I was, as far back as I can remember, I was fishing with, um, I have a lot of older brothers, much older than, than I am, and uh, as I was a little kid, they were always going fishing for trout and things in the local rivers, so I would always tag along with them. Um, and then when I was about five, we moved to uh, Lake and Wyndham, and <clears throat> that was it for me. I ended up... Uh, fishing pretty much every day of my life until I moved away. <laughs> um, so so I was always on the lake, always fishing. I was paddling a canoe and kayaks when I was five years old, six years old. Um, you know, so I, it's been part of my life uh, ever since I can remember. And would you say live lining then is, is a more prevalent thing for your day out fishing? Um, for me, uh, for big bass and, and the excitement of it, uh, for me, is, is everything. Uh, I, like, I, I use a lot of artificials as well. <clears throat> and a lot of different tactics, but um, the, the pure excitement of feeling a fish get scared when a big bass is about to nail it, uh, <laughs> that's everything for me. <laughs> so so I typically, you know, it's, it's typically my go-to method once the, wa- the water temps warm up and we can ca- catch the bait and, you know, the big bass are around. Cool. And uh, so getting the, the bait, obviously, like you're saying, it's all about timing. Um, obviously, there are days where there aren't any bait fish around you know we're coming into a season now that they will be more prevalent and uh what are some of the bait fish that we can chase around well so uh, i start looking for water temps around 64 degrees for scup uh, scup is my primary uh bait to use during like late june through september really um i, I prefer to use it i don't have to try very hard to catch it I don't, i'm not looking for schools of anything i just have to find some structure jig up a scup, make sure it's legal size, throw it on my live lining rig and, and get it, you know, 20 to 100 yards back to where I want to fish it. And obviously there are restrictions on uh, live lining certain bait fish. How yeah. would someone tell, uh, what's a good way to identify, let's say, a blue back herring that is not legal? Oh, uh, I don't mess with herring at all. <laughs> so yes, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm not even going to, uh, 
to, you know, if I, if I happen to jig up a herring on accident, that thing is going right back. Um, but so, so, you know, I, I primarily target scup, uh, bunker, obviously, when, when they're around and, and available, they're, that's the, the cream of the crop. Um, but, you know, I've used legal size taw tog, <laughs> I've used mm-hmm. uh, black sea bass, um, sea robins, uh, pretty much anything, cunner, you know, a- anything that's swimming in there that's smaller than the bass, the bass wants to eat. So, yeah, they're not very picky. No, no. If it's going to fit in their stomach, uh, it, it's going to get hit if there's a bass around. And this, uh, the seminar is going to be Saturday, that's April the 30th, next weekend, that's 1 to 3 p.m., and uh, there's going to be some uh, burgers and some refreshments, I'm hearing. Yeah, and it usually is. <laughs> really is a good good uh, facility to hold a seminar. Yeah, we have a blast. Uh, the, the past couple, uh, Chris Wall did one, and uh, Eric Harrison, the most recently, uh, did one about a month ago now. Um, and, and both of them had a great turnout. Um, we're hoping to have the same kind of turnout. I, I hope I can uh, share some knowledge and, and give some people some, some good information for this upcoming season. Oh, yeah. I remember, I, you know, Eric was a guest on the show last week, and I remember leaving there pumped like I just left a rock concert. Yeah. And Eric, immediately, immediately went fishing yeah. after that with, with the new knowledge I got. And I'd encourage anyone to attend these seminars, whether it's at Three Bells or, or further on down the road. I know later on today, Sean Barnum has one going down on, on Bridgeport. And uh, they're always a great thing to for everyone, especially if you're learning. Um, you want to get your feet wet, but you don't want to fall over getting wet um, because there's a lot of great knowledge, like you're saying, with safety. And uh, it's not just fishing. There's a lot more to it before you head out on the water, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it, and it's becoming comfortable on the water, you know, and, and kind of approaching uh, as, a, as a newcomer, approaching the sport uh, with, with a bit of mm, fear, I guess, is probably a good way to look at it. I've, I've seen some pretty nasty uh, mess-ups uh, over my fishing career, and, uh, you know, myself included. And you can get hurt out there. It's a dangerous sport, but it's also a blast if you're doing it safely. Yeah, that's, again, 113 Oswagachi Hills Road. That is in Niantic. The phone number, 860-739-6264 to RSVP. This could fill up. I Last so. one was very popular. I hope so. And uh, how about the uh, you're gonna are you gonna get into some of the equipment like some of the proper reels to use yeah, line gonna, weight um, stuff like that? Yep, yeah, I'll be bringing uh, covering a lot of the different rigs that I use, and I'll bring some of my combos to check out and hand around and let everyone see you know the tackle that's kind of my standard. It's not necessarily the right right for everybody, but mm-hmm. it's what I like to use um, and try to give people some direction on what what to get. Um, you know, with these bigger fish, you don't you don't want light tackle. You're going to wear a fish out and kill it. Uh, you, want, you want it to get back in the water safely. Um, so I, I use pretty stout gear. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of stuff that I've learned over the years, and I, and I kind of want to just get it out there so people are doing this right and, and doing this so we can keep these big fish back in the water swimming. Yeah, and then like you're saying, this is a specific uh, thing about kayak fishing, which there are obviously some more dangers than on a boat. Um, and especially, you know, especially you're a Hobie fisherman, which is sit on top. Yep. Um, but th- that's where a lot of people can learn some really great information. Yeah, and and these methods, uh, you know, I'll cover a lot of things that can go across the gamut from boats to kayaks. I've been fished out of boats for several years as well, and, and I, I just had a boat until last year. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've, I've done these all these same tactics that I'm going to cover from my boat successfully. So, you know, it's not just necessarily for kayak people. If, if anyone that, that wants to fish and catch big stripers wants to come down and learn something, everyone's welcome. All right. And, uh, you know, you're also on the Hobie kayak fishing team. Uh, how's that? What, there's a lot involved with that, huh? Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great uh, community of, of anglers. I mean, a lot of these guys are the cream of the crop. I'm, I'm pretty humbled to be on the team, honestly. Um, I think this is my fifth season with them. Um, uh, you know, using these boats, uh, and I, I'm not trying to <laughs> bash any other brands, but if you're going to be fishing saltwater, freshwater from a kayak, the Hobie is the best choice possible. So, um, 
and I apologize. My baby is crying upstairs. <laughs> oh no, no, no problem, no problem. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today. You know, that's at Three Bells Outfitters and uh, with Matt Brown Saturday, April thirtieth, one to three p.m. Refreshments are going to be there. One thirteen Oswegatchie Hills Road. 860-739-6264. You can RSVP, get some more information. And uh, we're looking forward to a great seminar. We'll see you there. Thank you so much, Jesse. All right, thanks for joining us. All right, take care. So make sure you get out there and uh, get to these seminars. Uh, that's next weekend with Matt, but then we have Rivers and Bait and Tackle. That's today, 440 Boston Post Road. And uh, that's 860-388-2283, Bunker Spoons, featuring Captain Bruce Miller and uh, covering all the details how to effectively fish Bunker Spoons. And it's a great way to catch those big stripers, especially as they are now in town. So, uh, hey, we'll take it. And then tomorrow you have the Boat Locker Seminar, 706 Howard Ave in Bridgeport. That's 203-259-7808, featuring Sean Barham. He's a uh, Hobie Top Gunner. And also a boat locker, as well as Bobby Nagy, who is the same, and who will be they'll be talking black fishing and judging the tides for ideal fishing. We're gonna take a break, but we'll be back with a safety minute. Like I said, if you have some call, if you want to make a call and let us know what's going on, you can call us here. And uh, the time sure flies as we are almost wrapped up another show. But we'll be back in a few minutes. Hear that? Of course not, because a dead car battery doesn't make a sound. You know who does make sound? Your daughter. And if you miss her big game, she'll make plenty of angry, high-pitched sounds. Better head to your neighborhood Advance Auto Parts. We offer free battery testing, a three-year replacement warranty on our platinum batteries, and free installation from one of our parts pros. Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. Most vehicles, most locations. See store for details. The Home Depot is bringing the great outdoors home with lush, green Boston ferns, now at a special buy of just $9.88 each. You'll not only save over $3 a piece, but you'll bring a fresh touch to a bedroom, living room, a front porch, anywhere you like, or everywhere you like, at this price. Bring on spring with lush, green Boston ferns at a special buy of just $9.88, now at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Valid through April 27th. Don't miss Southern Connecticut's number one local talk with Stu Breyer on WICH. The program that lets everyone be heard from health issues, politics, to entertainment. Important information that affects your town. It's Stu Breyer, 10 to 2, from your number one local connection. First and Natalie Radio, WICH, AM 1310. And now, the Fishing Today Safety Minute on 1310 WICH. All right, as we get into the striper fishing especially and more of the saltwater species, and we venture further out into the sound and uh, the arrival of those big stripers, of course, UHF radios can be an important part of of, uh, your safety and what you bring with you. Whether you get separated from your friends while kayaking, to motor problems, to bona fide emergencies, UHF radios are what can save your life. And with them, you can contact the Coast Guard and uh, other emergency services. The cost can range from about 50 bucks and beyond 300 for the uh, really high-tech classy ones, and they can be found uh, just about any marine retailer as well as online. And I hope you'll consider them this season as we go deeper with the warmer weather. So, uh, all right. 8.53, we're almost out of time. And uh, Glenn, who is uh, thankfully, on my part, is uh, you know very thankfully takes care of our pages. And you can always check us out online too, right? Yes, at our website, we've developed quite a lot of information there. A lot of resources are there online at wich.com. And if you go to personalities and then just uh, scroll down to Fishing Today, Jesse Roach, and you'll find the uh, Fishing Today web page right there and that will connect you to uh, our podcast which will be available mm-hmm. shortly after the show each week we do have a podcast so you don't have to miss any week's uh, fishing today show and also uh, the fishing today facebook page we've got twitter we've got all kinds of ways to stay connected including some links jesse's uh, fishing links to uh, 
some uh, great uh, information as well, like the Connecticut DEEP, the general fishing information. Uh, uh, Nor'east.com has saltwater fishing. And uh, the National Weather Service out of New York has the marine weather forecasts. It's all just a click away. It really is. And uh, you want to be the best thing you can bring with you out on the water is information. As Eric Harrison pointed out uh, last week when we had him on the show, um, know where you're fishing, know what's going on, know the rules because you don't want NCON police to, to stop you. And, and, you know, because ignorance is no excuse. And uh, especially as uh, Matt was talking about live lining, there are some species. Well, there's one in particular that it will a couple that you really can't touch. And that is the alewives that uh, uh, go sea run and also the blueback herring. So you can also go online and, and see the descriptions for yourself. So you can look at the picture. You can kind of see, okay, what's the difference between a shad and a blueback herring and an alewife to a bunker? Um, as a lot of people like to live line the bunkers. And with this mild winter, a lot of the bait fish never even left. They, they just stayed put all winter long. And uh, we're seeing that a lot with uh, you know the bluefish that have stayed in some local areas and um, obviously the holdovers and uh, in the stripers. So make sure you know uh, you get you have knowledge because that is the biggest thing that you can take with you out there on the water as uh, we head out. And uh, I know I'm heading out there today. Glenn, you do any fishing? Uh, it's been a long time, few and far between. <laughs> well, you should. You should. There's a lot of programs out there that... Uh, my brother was a big fisherman. He used to do that a lot. He had a lot more patience than I did, or maybe he just liked to get up earlier. But uh, <laughs> those times have changed. Now I'm the one that gets up at, uh, you know, an ungodly hour of the morning. Is it true that most fishermen like to get up at uh, 4 a.m., 5 a.m.? Is that something that makes a difference? Well, we're controlled by nature. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the fact, like, for example, for striped bass, um, tends to be a better bite. Uh, night maybe approaching to the morning hours as the sun rises or even after sunset in the dark but we are also controlled by the tide so if you have an incoming tide at say 1 a.m then that's when you go and uh and sometimes tide isn't favorable like say if you have to work and you get out of work but it's a outgoing tide and it's going to be dead low by the time you're ready to go fishing and the next one is at midnight and uh you know if you drink a lot of coffee and uh you know, you can get out there at any time. That's why I'll, you'll, I'll be so, I'll be out there. I'm on a 24/7 schedule with fishing myself. You've gotten up at one o'clock in the morning to go fishing. I have, I oh. have, um, and I know a lot of my friends out there are they're out there right now that have been out there since 5 a.m. in the rain and uh, you know everything. One thing that, bike. that you do, which is maybe a secondary hobby, it's impressive though, is the amount of photos that you take. You put a lot of them to your own personal Facebook page and mm -hmm. to your fishing today page and uh, how do you do that do you have people come along and take those <laughs> pictures or do you take fishing selfies uh well i have a gopro and uh that's another thing to get into the technology of fishing um and and but there's also etiquette uh with taking these pictures you know a lot from the safety of the fish um if you don't intend to keep the fish it's a great idea to uh don't spend a lot of time with it out of the water you want to really just take that picture and get it back in the water. And there's a lot of times, too, um, especially on social media, where there's a lot of politics on, on fishing social media and a lot of egos involved. And sometimes people may get mad at you for a background that they may recognize where it is because it's one thing to tell a friend, but when you're posting things on Facebook and next thing you know, there's droves of people coming to your spot, and um, some aren't as responsible as others. They may be trashing it, maybe beer cans, maybe leftover bait and lines and, and things like that. So, um, you know, you may not think it's a big deal, but there's a whole heck of a lot of other fishermen that do take it pretty seriously. Um, well, keep on posting those pictures. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, even you know. whether you go fishing or not, I mean, they are just uh, beautiful uh, landscapes and seascapes and uh, just great color and everything else. Thanks. Well, the sunsets, too, are great. I mean, that yeah. really comes, what comes with the fishing, um, you know, you don't have to catch a fish to have a great time on the water. There's loons, there's bald eagles, 
There's all sorts of wildlife you've seen. I've seen uh, minks on the water's edge. I've seen uh, some really, really interesting things out there. I've seen Taylor Swift's boat go by. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> you didn't see her, though. Oh, no, I didn't see her, but she has a really huge boat, and she tows a 40-foot center council behind her. You probably get too close, and you'll see Taylor Swift's bodyguard boat. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it's it, it, whether you're fishing or not, you know, get out there and on the water. You don't even have to fish. You know, it's great for picture taking, too, and, and it's just, I recommend being a day a day afloat is better than a day on land any day, in my opinion. Okay, well, that's going to do it for the show today. It's already over. Can you yep. believe it? Well, next week we're, uh, we're going to have a great show, too, and uh, we'll keep you updated during the week on our online stuff, so make sure you keep up with us there in the podcast. We'll follow the show. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for listening. Join us every Saturday. Saturday at 8.30 for Fishing Today on your number one local connection, 1310 WICH.